apparently YouTube's not going to be nice tonight. Twice a month, I end up um, getting new meds for each kid, each of the kiddos, and so it's me and Michael's new prescriptions, and they need to be cut in half and dosed and put in gel capsules. So that is what I'm currently doing for my lovely fun this evening. So. I wanted to come in and I wanted to talk to you guys about what is going on in our house, what's new, what's fun and exciting, or not so exciting. Um, we got our one ohm results today for Amelia. And it has something very, very interesting on it, as you saw in the, the thumbnail. Um, Mia has a fairly common for kids with neurodiversities as far as a mutation goes, and it is a mutation of the MTHFR gene. And do I remember what it stands for? No, it stands. Yeah, methylentra. Yep, yep. Yep, folate reductase, yeah, gene. Oh, it's, yep, yeah, it's one of those. So what it, this defect um, or genetic mutation does is controls your body's ability to turn folic acid into folate. And so you can have an over buildup of folic acid and there's folic acid in a lot of things when you think of like breads that we give like the kids choice bread has extra folic acid in it most general mill cereals have extra folic acid in it because it is a vitamin that we turn into folate that we use um, in our bodies and folate is a B vitamin, Ooh, girly girly, and it's used to um, make red and white blood cells and convert carbs into energy. And so we get that naturally from a lot of foods. Um, dark leafy greens have a lot of really good folate in it. Nuts have folate in it. So that there are ways that she can get it. There's a puppy who wants a toy. So there are ways that she can get it without being given folic acid, but we really need to watch her now intake of a folic acid. So that was a very interesting um, discovery out of her one ohm. The other very interesting part of getting her one ohm back was finding out that um, all of the stimulants that we use to treat ADHD, things like Adderall, Ritalin, um, she actually doesn't have any issues with them. So that's really good to know that we're on the right track as far as what we're giving her. It kind of gives me a peace of mind as a mom that I'm doing the right thing. We also found out that she can't tolerate a lot of antidepressants. So hopefully we're not going to struggle with any of those issues anytime soon. That'd be really helpful. The other really exciting thing for Mia is we are on the journey to get her neuropsych eval done. And a neuropsych eval, um, as I've talked about Michael having his, is a testing where they check into lots of different developmental disorders um, along with some fine motor stuff and some gross motor stuff. So that'll be very interesting to see what hers is. I can't wait to see her breakdown. Um, I'm fairly sure that we're going to walk away with it with some dysgraphia and dyspraxia, but we'll, we'll see what they think. Um, I obviously know we're going to walk away with some ADHD and some 
um, anxiety. I'm pretty sure that we've got some fine motor delays, which will be interesting for them to look at. So we'll we'll keep you updated when that happens. We just filled out all of her paperwork um, yesterday. We're waiting to get the teachers back, so that'll be a big a big part of that, getting that teacher the teacher form back, and then we'll be able to ship that off. And it's about a two month wait right now to get in there. And so as we go down that path, I will do better since I didn't get a chance to really film Michael's very much when he had his neuropsych eval. I'll be able to better kind of walk you guys through what happens at a neuropsych eval with what they consider a preschooler. Mia, because she's um, five and even though she's in kindergarten, she's technically considered preschool age. Sorry, the pill crushed. And so... Um, I know what happens at a toddler neuropsych eval, but I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do different at a preschool neuropsych eval. I'm sure it'll go a little bit longer than Michael's did. Uh, Michael is two years older than Mia when he had his done. Actually, he'll be a little, he would have been a little over two years younger because his was done this summer. So that is, that is what's going on with that. And then the last thing is we are headed to the cities tomorrow with Michael because Michael does not sleep. I, I would love if he did. I am kind of getting sick of this no sleep stuff. Um, but he doesn't sleep and so we are headed down to go have a sleep consult and find out what they want to do for that. Um, I'm pretty sure that we're going to end up having a sleep study. So that'll be a very fun uh, um, trip to take you guys on too, is what happens at a three-year-old sleep study. I'm not sure. If you've had a three-year-old who's had a sleep study done before, um, tell me in the comments because I'm, I'm very nervous about how this is going to go. And again, anyone who has a better pill crusher not crusher splitter it's supposed to split them but it it crushes them it's horrible and not fun but we do what we got to do as parents right so that's what's going on coming up with too typical if there's anything you guys want me to answer or talk about um anything that you want the kids to talk about mia and michael are very excited to get back on camera so anything that you want them to discuss let me know in the comments and i will try and bring them on as, as we do this kind of stuff and we can answer all your questions and hopefully you guys will get some good information out of it. So we'll see you later YouTube. Have a good night. Bye.